wall of free radical reaction in the formation of DNA damage. And I work in the New York University in the Waverly building. So what is DNA damage? Well, it's a damage in DNA which is caused by the excessive reaction with the free radicals. And the free radicals are compounds or atoms with unpaired electrons. So basically, if you guys heard about the covalent bond, which is a bond that connects the let, which combines the atoms, and then they have the, the electrons are formed with the bond. So free radicals, in other words, don't have the covalent bonds. And the significance of studying the DNA damage is um, if incapable of reparation, then the DNA undergoes frequent mutation, which would later develop into cancer. So basically, we want to understand how the radicals work in the human body. So this is um, how the free radical level works. So there are three steps. And the first one is initiation. So it basically produces the R, which is called radical. And the second step is propagation. And then you can see that the, there are two equations there, so there is um, two radicals in there. And the final step is called termination, which is um, basically eliminates the radicals by combining the radical and the radical itself. So this is a diagram just to um, help understand like how like radicals work. So first, um, this is the perisulfate. So it basically with using the light, it basically turns into the radical over here. And then later on, it reacts with the, the nitride and the carbonate. So when it so when it reacts, then what happens is that nitride becomes oxidized, which means that the nitride loses the electron itself. And the persulfate gains the electron as a, as a whole result. And then this thing, the same thing for the bicarbonate. So the bicarbonate loses the electron and then the sulfate, the sulfate gains the electron as a result. And so these two basically show the DNA that, um, the alteration of the DNA. And so this is the PG, which is the guanine basically. So this is basically the normal how the PG looks like. And then when the reaction happens, what happens is that the nitride basically attaches itself into the BG, and this is how it becomes after the reaction. So if supposedly if the mutation happens, then when it when it divides, when it does the when it when it does the mitosis, instead of producing this, it will end up producing the mutated um, BG. So then my experiment is basically um, find the weight of the con uh, weight of the greatest weight between the different concentration of nitrite. So that's the experiment. So my hypothesis is that I assume that the larger the concentration of nitrite was, the greater the weight. And when I graph the concentration weight graph on um, graph weight linear. So these are the materials. Um, Microprotect, UV slash PI spectrometer, xenon lamp software such as Excel and Origin, chemicals which is um, sodium persulfate, nitri um, sodium nitride, phosphate buffer, and VG. And VG is called 2 prime deoxyguanosin. And I have deionized distilled water, stopwatch, and cubic cell. Okay, so I hope this, but um, so the procedure is that. I apply the Excel to calculate the desired confidence of volume and weight. Then after that, I prepare the stock solutions of each chemicals according to the calculation. And before I continue with the procedure, I just would like to explain what stock solutions are. So basically, the stock solutions are solutions with the base, one basic component. So each solution has only one chemical compound, so instead of like several of them. So I prepare the stock solutions. To it. And then after preparing the stock solutions, I use the micro pipettes to insert each stock solution into one test tube, totaling the volume of one milliliter and insert the mixture. And afterwards, um, I use the, the spectrometer and qubit cell to first measure the baseline of the graph by inserting the ionized the, the, the water. 
And then after taking the water out, I put the mixture into the cubit cell and measure its absorbance. And then afterwards, um, I took the cubit cell out from the spectrometer and applied the UV light by using the xenon line for 10 seconds. And then afterwards, I, used, I measured the absorbance by using the UV slash DIA spectrometer. So, and then afterwards, I repeated the two previous steps like, um, so that like, I measured like, the, the absorbance like, several times. So after like, I finished using the spectrometer, I copied the data table and then pasted it into the Excel. After pasting, I used the software origin to plot the data using scatter plot and find the line of best fit. And then afterwards, I repeated the procedure from the beginning using different concentrations of line chart. So um, this is the, basically the result of when I used the spectrometer. So you can see like um, different, like, um, different absorbance. So the red here is like a, it is the mixture without the UV light on, and then as and as um as I go like farther and farther, and, and then by exciting the light, the absorbance got larger. And then so after that, I tracked it into the Microsoft Excel, and then this is the the result. And then for this one, I used the concentration of 0.5 millimolar. So the result. So at 0.5 millimolar, the rate is the greatest with the rate at 0.00395. And also, uh, the graph is not linear as I hypothesized. So instead, I have the graph um, with a non-linear curve. So in the future work, um, I plan to add um, bicarbonate into the reaction mixture and absolute the results. So for my experience so far, I only really use the nitride itself without including the bicarbonate. And then through the experiment, I will compare the rate of different concentration of nitride with and without uh, bicarbonate. So this is the reference. I would like to acknowledge on the of Lord Misha Kurevich, full staffs, full workers of the New York University, Dr. Sat, Hongqing Society, and you guys, the audience. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, uh, yes. What we're trying to see. Is, 
Any other questions? 